Hey, welcome back to Ask the Professor with a Texas RV Professor, Terry Cooper. I'm Dave Dufour, and we're talking about propane, everybody's favorite gas. Well, maybe not, but well, sounds good to me, right, Terry? Uh, no comment. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we, we, it's time. It's time for the Ask the Professor part of Ask the Professor, in which the professor answers some of your questions. Our first question is up, and it is: Why is my propane tank not completely filled when I take it in to be filled up? Well, the thing we have to remember is, is that any time that you take a liquid and you start boiling it and creating a vapor, you've got to give it some room for some expansion. Uh -huh. And then as the day or the, uh, the time of the season gets a little warmer, that gas is going to expand. So we only fill these propane cylinders, tanks, ASME t uh, containers, um, up to 80%. Mm -hmm. So that way we give them a little room for expansion. Okay. Now here's a tidbit you might just file it away. There are some organizations that, you know, where you'll go and you'll buy the propane from that little local convenience store and they've got that little cage out there on the curb. Sometimes they only fill theirs up to about 65%. Okay. And the reason being is is that they work off the principle that that cylinder is going to be sitting out there on the curb and, you know, that sun's going to be baking on it and they want to make sure they don't have any problems. But if you go to a reputable dealer, RV dealership, a propane company, they'll fill it up to 80% for you. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we have a diagram of that. It just kind of gives you an idea. So it leaves that little bit of a dome at the top of that tank uh, available for air, which compresses, but LP, and LP does not, essentially, right? That's correct. Okay. That's so, correct. So, but if you get, if, if, it get, if it gets too hot, can, can you actually break the tank? Oh, absolutely. There's a pressure relief valve on that uh, service valve uh -huh. that you screw your hoses on. And if you get enough temperature or you get enough heat on that thing, it'll cut loose and it'll spew. Okay. Um, there's you know, been cases here in Texas where we've heard of people that would put them at the trunk of their car and go places like go to the shopping at the mall and come out two or three hours later and hit the remote control and the car explodes. And okay. it's, you know, they weren't thinking. No one told them, hey, you need to go straight home after you fill that propane cylinder up. Okay, and the propane now, you know, I uh, in RVs you have the uh, you have a uh, a gauge or a control system in inside that tells you when it's about time to to get a new uh, to to refill that, correct? Or it gives in, you an idea in a lot of the, the motorhomes you do, and, and in the high end fifth wheels you will, but um, on some of the DOT cylinders, not always. A lot of times you have to go out there and tap on the tanks or go out there and look at the changeover valve that's on there but okay. it's you know it's just individually you know whatever a person was willing to pay for is the the feature and option that they got they used to make these I, this here's my question for the professor and i just thought of it terry you there there we used to make these little stickers that you put on the side that were somehow heat sensitive and would sort of like read from the outside of the propane tank uh how much uh, gas was in there it was like a color change on the on uh -huh. this uh, strip are you i assume you're familiar with those do they still make Absolutely. those do works off the same work? principle as old mood rings remember those that we used to have yeah right and i was yeah. always wrong but i <laughs> no you're right and, and it's just with a peel and stick and you're right uh you know there's other gadgets that you can put on there but you're right you put it on there and you can sense because let's face it that propane's you know minus 44 degrees is what his boiling point is so it's pretty cold okay. so inside that cylinder it's going to have a different you know, levels of strata, uh, the different stratas of the inside of that cylinder are going to be different temperatures. Okay, gotcha. So that actually, no, those things actually do work, huh? I never, they mm -hmm. oh, very to be much able so. to work yes. When, yes. when I used them. I don't know, I had problems with them. Anyway, okay, here is our next question. I have heard I should replace my propane regulator e even if it is not leaking. Is this true? Absolutely. Now, here's the deal. We've got to realize what this propane regulator is doing for us. Now, this is not the regulator that you see on your barbecue grill. This is what we have on an RV. It's what we call a two-stage regulator. So it's going to take the pressure out of that cylinder, or that DOT cylinder, or that ASME tank. Mm -hmm. Say it's uh, the middle of the summer and the pressure is, say, 200 PSI. Well, at the first stage, it's going to drop it down to 10 PSI. And then on the output stage, the one that feeds the coach, it's going to drop it down to 0.6 psi, which is what we call 11 inches of water column. Right. Well, what happens is, is that in that first stage, there's a little diaphragm, and that diaphragm is a thin piece of rubber. And in you know, let's face it, this thing sits out in the weather, 
it's going to get baked, it's going to get frozen, it's going to get baked, it's going to get frozen. So that little piece of rubber dries out. So usually after about five, six, maybe seven years, that little diaphragm begins to start giving it up. And at the cost of regulators, I mean, it, it's not worth it. I mean, right. for less than 50 bucks, you can put a new regulator on. And so um, when you figure the cost of a one DOT cylinder of propane, you can more than pay for that regulator. Mm -hmm. When that thing, that diaphragm starts leaking, you're spewing out all your propane, and all of a sudden there was money out the window there. Right. So it's just basically a matter of time, seven, uh, six or seven years, mm -hmm. just, just plan to replace it regardless. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like a set of tires on an automobile. Right. At some point, they're going to become dry rotted, you know, or they're going to become mm -hmm. cracked, and they're going to start leaking. And okay. same thing with the propane regulator. Can you, see, can you see this from the outside before it's a problem, or is it just pretty much a matter of deciding it's time? It's just time. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's no repair on these regulators. I mean, there's no way to take them apart and put them back together because no one wants to take that liability. Gotcha. So it's just a pop and swap thing. And like I say, they're inexpensive, so mm -hmm. why not? I mean, we change the oil in our vehicles. Why not, you know, take there a little precaution and let's change the regulator so we can prolong the life of things. Okay, it's important to be safe. Okay, we are going to be back in just a few minutes with more from the Texas RV professor and tips about being safe and using propane wisely. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. <laughs> 